It looks like Bendy is having a big return in 2025, with two main installments set to release and a lot of news on the horizon. In this video, I'll be looking at the two Bendy games releasing next year and some of the other installments that could receive news. To start off, Bendy Lone Wolf will be releasing next year. This game is a rebrand and overhaul of Boris in the Dark Survival, a top-down survival horror game featuring Boris the Wolf as the main protagonist. It's a fairly simple game. Every level is randomly generated and you have to find supplies while evading a variety of enemies. Lone Wolf is building off the foundation of Dark Survival and seems much more complex. According to a Steam post, it has new combat, new conclusion, new enemies, new bosses, new weapons, new achievements, new minigames, new hazards, but same Boris. This is a lot to unpack, so let's break it down one by one. New combat isn't surprising. The lone wolf image in the teaser game Secrets of the Machine showed Boris with a frying pan, somewhat hinting at combat. And the lone wolf teaser has searchers surrounding Boris. Similar to Ink Machine, it seems like the searchers will be basic enemies that we'll have to fight. New weapons is also something that was mentioned, so it looks like there will be a variety of weapons we can use. A weapon I think would be perfect for Boris is the plunger. It feels like a goofy weapon he would use. In Ink Machine, Boris briefly holds a gent pipe, so I think that's likely a weapon we'll see in Lone Wolf. Moving on, a new conclusion to the game is something we already knew about. I covered some possible endings in my speculation video that I made a couple months back, but since then, we have some new info. Thanks to one of Bendy's creators, The Meatly, we know for a fact that Lone Wolf takes place during the events of the second main game, Dark Revival. So the game likely won't end with Henry meeting Boris, since in Dark Revival's version of the cycle, it seems like that never happens. If you're unfamiliar with the cycle, it's a parallel universe created by the Ink Machine, and it's where the series' main gameplay occurs. The cycle is reset by playing the end reel, and the events of the first game, Bendy and the Ink Machine, are replayed for years. However, in the second main game, Dark Revival, someone from the real world, Wilson Arch, has entered the cycle and altered it. So a lot of the events that should happen in Bendy and the Ink Machine never do, creating a unique version of the cycle that we experience in Dark Revival. Toward the end of Dark Revival, we see Boris traveling in the Gent Workshop, so it's possible the game could end there. Why is Boris in the Gent Workshop? I'm not sure. We'll just have to wait and see. Other than that small detail, I have no clue how Lone Wolf will end, since we don't know what Boris is up to during Dark Revival. At the end of that game, the cycle is once again reset, so regardless of how the game ends, it will all be reset back to the first chapter of Bendy and the Ink Machine. It'd be really cruel if the game ends with Boris remembering who he was, only for everything to be reset again and he forgets his true identity. Anyways, let's move on to new enemies. I already mentioned that the searchers appear in this teaser, but since this takes place during Dark Revival, it's very likely we'll see some of the threats from that game, like the Lost Ones, Widows, the Slicer, and Keepers. It'd be really cool if we got to see the ruler of the sewers, Lord Amok. He briefly appeared in Dark Revival, but was very easily taken down, which I always found disappointing. So hopefully he returns as a threat in Lone Wolf. New bosses kind of goes hand in hand with this, we might get to see some of the bosses from Bending the Dark Revival. For enemies and bosses, I'm hoping we can get some new characters, since I always love seeing what monsters Joy Drew Studios can come up with. New achievements is something I'm glad is being added to the game, since unlike the other entries in the series, Dark Survival has no achievements at all. I just think achievements are neat challenges and give you more to do in games. New minigames also sounds like it will give us much more to do. Dark Survival is a simple game where you bounce an ink ball around with a moving platform to score points by hitting objects. I assume the new minigames will be some simple games like this. They might also have some secrets tied to them. When completing the previously mentioned minigame in Dark Survival, an audio log from Joey Drew is unlocked. It's possible that these new minigames might have some similar rewards that build upon the story. New Hazards is another new addition to the game, and I assume these will be traps across the map. In the teaser for Lone Wolf, there's what appears to be a floor trap, with spikes coming out of it. I'm guessing that this trap will activate when Boris walks over it, and will either deal damage or kill him instantly. I'm excited to see how they expand upon Dark Survival. It was a neat game on its own, but with all these new additions, it could really be a fantastic experience and a great addition to Boris' story. Another big bendy game coming out next year is The Cage, a psychological horror game that takes place during the events of Dark Revival. This game marks the return of Henry as the main protagonist. If you don't know who this crusty old guy is, he's an ink replica of the real Henry, who is the co-founder of Joy Drew Studios and the creator of Bendy himself. This replica of Henry was the protagonist in Ink Machine, and later appeared toward the end of Dark Revival. This new game is about how Henry escaped the Keeper's prison, known as the Pit, and came to rescue Audrey at the end of Dark Revival. The Pit was first introduced in Dark Revival, and I was really disappointed, because despite it being teased in the marketing and the game, we never got to enter it. I was hoping there would be a Dark Revival DLC about the Pit, since you can't just tease a super messed up prison and not show us what's in there. But instead, it's getting a whole game, which is even better. The cage looks very different from the previous Bendy installments. 
It seems to be more focused on psychological horror, and it looks more graphic, with actual blood in the teasers. Judging from the marketing, it also looks like there'll be some gore and body horror. The pit has an industrial setting similar to the Gent Workshop in Dark Revival, and the enemies have a more unique look. We've seen lost ones with some sort of torture device on their head, a keeper restrained by chains, a giant searcher with a mechanical body, and some sort of bloody monster holding an eyeball. All of this looks crazy, and is a huge departure from what we've previously seen. I'm really excited to see how all these enemies turn out, and I'm sure there's even more that we haven't seen yet. Something that's people really excited is the return of the mad composer, Sammy Lawrence. This strangely ripped musical man was the main antagonist in the second chapter of Bending Ink Machine, where he tried to sacrifice Henry to the Ink Demon, and he later returned for some fan service in Chapter 5. In Dark Revival, he had a cameo in the Psycho Breaker's prison, and in the game's climax, Allison shoots him to death. While these little cameos were cool, Sammy originally had a much bigger role in Dark Revival, which was sadly cut. However, the cage seems to be bringing him back into the spotlight. While we haven't heard much about his role in the game, Dark Revival does characterize his current state. In Chapter 2 of Ink Machine, Sammy is killed by the Ink Demon. So when he returns in Chapter 5 after being reborn, he's gone completely mad, enraged by the Ink Demon forsaking him. However, after Ink Machine, the cycle is reset again, but Wilson Arch interrupts it before the story can repeat. So in Dark Revival's version of the cycle, everything is different. Wilson represses the Ink Demon into the smaller form of Bendy, and he claims they killed the Ink Demon. In a note from Sammy, we learn that the inhabitants of the cycle called him a false prophet, since his lord had fallen, but Sammy still believed the Ink Demon lived and would return. So unlike Ink Machine, it seems like Sammy was never killed in this version of the cycle, and he still worships the Ink Demon. This is further reinforced in the end of the game when he sees Beast Bendy. Surrender yourself to the Lord of the Dark Cuddles! It's time to believe! Despite this, I think Henry and Sammy will team up in the cage. In the teaser revealing Sammy's cage appearance, the axe that Henry uses in the game is in Sammy's cell. This leads me to believe that Henry and Sammy will form a rocky alliance to escape the pit together. I definitely don't think this alliance would last long, especially if Sammy is still hellbent on worshipping the Ink Demon. Regardless of what happens, I'm just excited that Sammy is getting a big role in the series. Another character returning in this game is the adorable Bendy from Dark Revival. This is the form the Ink Demon was repressed into when Wilson the Keepers captured him, and in Dark Revival, Audrey encounters him a couple of times. In the teaser game, Secrets of the Machine, Bendy appears as an easter egg, and his model texture name references the cage, meaning that we'll see him again in this game. I think it'd be interesting to have Henry and Bendy meet up. I'm not exactly sure how Henry would react to seeing the character he created, or at least the character the real version of him created. Along with Bendy, I assume the Ink Demon will return as well, and I can't wait to see Henry encounter him again. I'm also wondering if the Ink Demon would speak to him, I think that'd be really interesting to see. Another character I think will return is Memory Joey, the living memory of Joey Drew. In Dark Revival, Henry mentions that Audrey could use the end reel to reset the cycle, but it's locked away in the pit. At the very end of the game, Memory Joey appears with the end reel in hand, and it's never explained how he got it. I believe the main objective of this game will be to retrieve the end reel from the pit, and Henry will give it to Memory Joey, which leads into the end of Dark Revival. These two characters meeting could be really interesting, they're both replicas of old friends who fell out, and I'd love to see what they have to say to each other. Henry's identity crisis could also be a big part of this game. He's not the person he believed he was, he's just a copy of the real Henry. Dark Revival briefly touched upon Henry, realizing that he isn't human. I'm pretty excited for the cage, so far it looks very different from the previous installments, which has me interested. Hopefully if the cage does well, we can get even darker Bendy installments. Since it makes it feel like an actual horror series, unlike some of the more kid-friendly mascot horror games flooding the market nowadays. The biggest installment in the works is by far the Bendy and Ink Machine movie. It looks like it's still early in development, so I highly doubt it'll be released next year, but I think we'll get some more news about it. Recently, the director was announced, and the Meatly has been talking a lot about the movie. One of the things that excites me the most is the use of practical effects in the movie. When the film was first announced, I was worried it'd be bogged down by CGI, but it seems like the Meatly still wants to keep some things practical. Right now, there's not too much to discuss for this movie, but I'm sure we'll learn more next year. Along with the movie, there are a lot of other installments that sadly won't be released next year, but I think we'll still learn more about them. First off is Bendy The Silent City, a first-person shooter game that was properly announced in the interactive teaser Secrets of the Machine. Similar to The Cage, this installment appears to be much darker, with blood and gore shown in the leaked test of the game. Not much is known about its story, but I think it's tied to Riley Wells, a character introduced in Secrets of the Machine. Riley was a young artist, and after the death of her parents, her drawings became more disturbing. She often drew a taxi character covered in blood, known as Gaskety, who was first introduced in Bendy and Nightmare Run, a spin-off mobile game that is sadly no longer playable. 
Later, Riley was hired at Joey Drew Studios, but was fired because of her disturbing artwork. And afterwards, she was hired at Jen. Riley's artwork is unique because it features the color red. Bendy's art style usually only uses yellow and black, except when Wilson introduces color to the cycle in Dark Revival. But Secrets of the Machine features red in all of Riley's art, which is interesting because a similar thing happens in Silent City. That game is almost entirely in grayscale, except for the color red. This could imply that Riley plays a role in Silent City's story, as right now, the color red is strongly associated with her. My theory right now is that Silent City is another cycle that Riley created at Gen, where her disturbing ideas run wild in their own universe. It's also possible that Riley will be involved in the final installment of the mainline Bendy games, Bendy 3. We don't know much about this finale, but I assume the Gen Corporation will be the main antagonist, since Dark Revival kept mentioning their shady CEO, Alan Gray, and they retrieved the ink machine at the end of the game. I'm sure we'll learn more about Bendy 3 next year, and hopefully we'll get a full title reveal. The future of Bendy is looking bright, and I can't wait to see what Joey Drew Studios has in store for us. If you liked this video, remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter and Blue Sky. If you want to financially support us, you can buy a super thanks on this video or donate to us on Ko-Fi. Thanks for watching, and check out some of our other videos.